we're going to look at making the call based on the level five New Zealand curriculum guidelines. If you ever see um, DBM over the OVS, we are not doing that at Hamilton Girls High School. We are doing the level five guidelines, which are sufficient for NCA external level one. Right, what we're looking at is that we're looking at a sample from two populations and we're interested in whether A tends to be bigger than B back in the populations. We have a sample, okay? So these are the samples and remember the samples will jitter, okay? So this one here may be there, but in reality it could be anywhere in this area and this is B and this is the sample box and whisker that we got and remember with the jitters that happen with samples then we would imagine that to be jittering along there. So the question is, is how sure are you if you get this result, whether the A would be tend to be bigger than B? Well, because there is quite a big separation here, and if you've got this jitter going on here, and you've got this jitter going on here, the chances are the boxes won't overlap. So there's a reasonable amount of separation between the sample here. And so that we are fairly confident that if we have that separation, that A would tend to be bigger than B back in the populations based on the evidence from the sample. Now that is also true if you look at something that's a little bit closer. There is still that level of separation in the sample. So we still have three quarters of A bigger than three quarters of B. And that's sufficient to think that if we have this jitter, that A would have a tendency to be further up the scale than B. So A would tend to be bigger than B back in our populations based on the sample result. So let's make it a little bit closer. So the more overlap you get in your boxes, the more unsure we are. So in this case, we notice there's an overlap between the boxes. So there is no separation between the boxes. So we now need some guidelines. So we're going to use the level five guidelines and the level five guidelines works on the half concept and three quarters. So you can see here that um, we look at the way the medians are and the quartiles. So here for A, we can see that the median is bigger than the upper quartile for B. Remember the quartiles are, that's the upper quartile, that's the lower quartile for B, and this is the lower quartile for A, and the upper quartile for A. We can see here that A is bigger than the upper quartile for B, so we can say that half of A is bigger than three quarters of B. Or we could look at it the other way around, we can see that B's median is lower than the lower quartile for, so it's lower than the lower quartile for A, which means that half of B is less than three quarters of the A values in the sample. And if that's the case, we can say that A tends to be bigger than B back in the population. In other words, it's located further to the right. That's based on the half three quarter rule. Three quarters, oh, that's one we've done, and that's the one that's, so we're doing the half three quarter rule. Okay, so this one's just brought it a little closer. It's the same idea, it's just brought it a little closer. You can see that half of A, the median for A, is bigger than the um, upper quartile for B. So we can say that half of A is bigger than three quarters of B, which is enough for us to say that A tends to be bigger than B back in the population. Remember, if we have that jitter, the chances are that would still be bigger than that one over there. If we do it the other way around, you can see that B's median is lower than the lower quartile for A. In other words, B, half of the B is bigger, sorry, half of B is lower than half of A, so three quarters of A. So we can say that three quarters of A is bigger than half of B, so that leads us to be able to make the same conclusion. I'm going to stop this and continue the rest in the next